placemaking um, at, at, at the grandest scale. It, it brings a certain amount of cohesiveness uh, uh, to the neighborhood. So we're really looking at the environment and trying to tie in what we're doing to add to what's already here. This space is, is, is a huge, huge amenity for us. It has been, I think, really fun to see this come together um, as a sculpture park in the Holland neighborhood with the kind of art and the kind of sophistication and elegance that you might see at the sculpture garden or in a museum or in a gallery. A lot of like NRP processes getting neighborhood feedback. Um, and it started with, with surveys, um, you know, to ask what, what people in the neighborhood would, would like to see and what their expectations were. What's been going on at Jackson is the neighborhood has been working in conjunction with the Park Board and the Minneapolis Arts Commission, etc., to upgrade the fields, add nicer things to the park, and put in some public art. Jackson Square Park was scheduled to have a standard uh, improvement session from the Park and Rec. However, the community felt that it was, you know, because it was so long overdue, uh, it was a 40-year wait for the community, they really wanted to, to do it right. And so the community, through NRP, uh, decided to work with Park and Rec, partner with them, and really take it from a standard fix-up to something that would really be placemaking. The Jackson Square Park project initially grew out of the early NRP planning with the Holland Neighborhood Improvement Association. Now, that, that particular planning process uh, identified a need to improve the neighborhood's public spaces, and secondarily, a need to support our youth in the neighborhood. It really was an initiative led by the Holland Neighborhood Association and their idea of getting this park looking better. So when the park board did the park redo a few years ago. The renovation included so many improvements and brand new equipment um, and, a, and a waiting pool. Some of the sculptural elements by Mr. Brenner had been in place already as kind of some of the first portions of, of this whole build out. This project was selected to be part of the City of Minneapolis's Art and Public Places program, as selected as a site when the park was actually being renovated by the Park Board. We wanted some functional art, too. Kevin Reich, he approached me, I suppose it was about 2007, 2008, about coming up with a concept for uh, the Edison High School backstop. Well, the park across the street, Jackson Square, Jim Brenner has a sculpture there currently. And uh, Kevin has secured him to do yet a couple more projects. In this case, another sculpture, kitty corner from our building, and the recreation of the softball backstop um, uh, in the park, which our girls softball team is gonna end up being calling their home field. And it wasn't lost upon the community that this is part of the arts district. Yet, you look around this immediate area, there's not too many visible signals that this is the Arts District. This project is virtually in the heart of the Holland neighborhood, and that's another thing that we are extremely proud of. The, the vision was to get, uh, to, to sort of capitalize on all these amenities that are right in this area. We have, of course, Edison High School and the athletic facility, the field. We have the Firefighter Museum. We have uh, the basin, which has uh, an uh, an amphitheater built into it. We saw an opportunity to sort of really capitalize on, 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 on what we had here, you know, with these key institutions. How can, we, how can we tie all that together? What was really surprising to me is how much steam it built very quickly and how the project really did expand from being kind of one sculpture and a series of benches to the backstop and the sign at Edison and the second sculpture and uh, the, and the neighborhood energy and the neighborhood support for the project have been really amazing. We are using our auto shop at this time for him to stage the installation of these two projects. We were going to have steel, glass, and light sculptures that, that will uh, talk to each other visually across the park. And they'll all have a uniformed continuity in their styling and how they're put together. I would say 15 years ago, this was the least desirable, least attractive part of the community. And what a statement that is. The most public part of Northeast Minneapolis, we can argue, where you have a convergence of five uh, public and quasi-public entities coming together, and it was very ramshackle, 
uninvested and undesirable. Today we take down the old, get ready for the new. So we're taking down this old backstop. Yeah, I'll just cut the straps, I'll just dismantle it basically. almost a year ago in May that we were here for Art of World and that's when we we had the pieces where all you know some of the pieces were assembled for this project. This is where the bronze plaque will be that will commemorate the firemen. So we have a big wooden template that's laid out uh, along where all the bolts that will hold the the structure up. It lays out how the arc goes to make to form the backstop. So each one is precisely located and bolted into a six foot deep footing that goes way into the ground. It's two feet in diameter, so it's very massive. Jim will be uh, an artist in residence here with our art classes. He will be working with some of our classes about, in particular, community art. After being awarded the the uh, commission, we did a lot of community meetings where we asked people what's important to you uh, from the Holland community, how would you describe yourself? And from that, we were able to drive some text that was then embedded into the concrete up uh, on the first uh, influx sculpture. This is not just a work of art, but it comes from the community. I think where we left off, uh, we just poured the uh, footing. So we've been waiting. These have cured up now. They've got to their maximum strength. And today we're bringing over all the vertical uprights. The big long pieces are 22 and a half feet up in the air. And that is actually you know, made up of three A's wall so it's you know very strong very it has to be able to take a lot of wind load from being able to push out on this not only is it an arts community but it has a strong industrial past so the materials that he chose are these raw metals this core 10 steel that that naturally rusts and has a real rugged beauty to it and it was not uh, lost on him that the bridge that the community also helped design uh, over the floodwater mitigation pond which is across the street from the school in the park it also had this core 10 steel this is the sculptor's crane, the forklift, or the bobcat as it may be. Weird things that you would use. Oh. This is about people power. This is about the community. This has uh, been one of the farthest reaching projects that I've done as far as working with uh, the city of Minneapolis, the park board, the school district, the Edison, you know, the neighborhood association, the, uh, uh, and just community meetings, teachers, uh, students. I mean, it's really been a collaborative process. side. Yeah. 
that one. It might have got moved a little. We got the wrong piece in there. That one goes on the end. There's very specific parts. Like there's a little flat spot on the end of that one. And those are made for the ends. And uh, they're very subtle things, but I'm glad we didn't weld it in before seeing it. So we'll spin the generator around and get the welder all hooked up so the truck will be like a portable welder. This is the first time that we've uh, got all the parts together. Moment of truth, if you will, if it actually works. Start welding them in anyway. This is one of the sections that comes along top of the backstop. So it has the sculpted glass, which is made by you know hand chiseling the edge of the uh, of the glass with a hammer and an anvil. So it's pretty old school, you know. Anvil, hammer, steel, glass. It's kind of a unique process that gives a scallop. It's an individually uh, chipped piece of glass that, what I love about this is it mechanically pixelates the light. There's an internal form that's made out of glass and an external form that's rigid and logical and, and you know, almost like an MRI slicing of the steel. But internal is an organic form which is flowing and chiseled and organic and full of light. Even though we look at something from one perspective, like influx, when you look at it straight on, it's a whole, you know, which represents a whole community. And as you turn around it, then you come around to the side, it turns to the symbol of infinity. So, you know, there's a certain connectedness to it. We hope to have the crane, hopefully it'll be Thursday morning so we can, you know, get everything welded in, and start working on the fence part too talks about this is some place that's unique, that's uh, got its own identity. And then to, to be inspired from the beginning, from the community meetings, talking with the students. We just got done putting in the top sections here, the crown with the glass and steel. And we had to kind of refit a little bit of the end down there, cut some off, and we're gonna weld that up here after lunch. As we were looking at uh, you know, some, some big splash of verbiage that would say a lot to a lot of different things. One word kept kind of popping up and it was innovation. The idea of innovation comes in a lot of different ways. The innovation that of course is associated with Edison, the great American inventor and innovator, the school of course that's Kitty Corner and we'll be using this. And of course the neighborhood itself uh, really had prided itself, it usually prides itself on the other I word improvement, but the fact that this was an innovative partnership uh, across you know, several projects with several partners, they felt was highly innovative and they're very proud of that innovation. At night, that word innovation uh, will be, well, the, it's a steel plate that's got the words cut out and uh, at night the O-N portion of the uh, innovation word, the on, will be lit up in blue. So it's a really kind of a neat uh, opportunity to have a dynamic exchange between community and artists and that, I believe, informs the piece to a greater whole. They built the brick wall, the retaining wall, the small hip wall that goes, echoes the shape of the backstop. Uh, it's out about 12 feet from the backstop, but it really carries the arc around. That really seems to change the uh, grandeur of the piece. It frames the, uh, the backstop. What's really interesting to me about Jim's work and how um, it's happened here in Holland is, is that it's, it's a very elegant artwork in many ways. Elegant materials, glass, light, metal. <laughs> Through art, we're really able to show that there's many different ways to be a part of a sustainable community. 
all the solar stuff is in up there. We teamed up with Edison High School and Jim Brenner to educate our youth on green technologies. This isn't a huge, you know, solar field or anything, but it's a very practical application of solar. So we thought this would be a really great way to have something in the community that is very visible. And they were able to help sponsor uh, procuring some of those panels. Uh, through their nonprofit. Those solar panels take in the, the light throughout the day and then at dusk they're going to switch on. There's four battery packs right at the top. It's right over the ON so we want everyone to know that we're an innovative community at the same time throughout the evening showing that we're on it and that we are supporting our youth. We think it means like creating something new. Like Thomas Edison. Like yeah, the light bulb. you know, inventing stuff. Innovate is to, you know, make things better, make things, you know, uh, connect more. Because our vision is through innovation and personal empowerment, the Edison community will partner with our students, igniting a passion for lifelong learning, instilling the ideals of international mindedness, leading our students to succeed at Edison and beyond. <laughs>and to think of what we can do, how we can solve the problems that have been created. Janie Chase, who's Chevy's wife, um, she is partnered with a foundation to help fund the initiative, and we're one of two schools in the Midwest to have this opportunity. Today we are having the school's um, green kickoff, and also Chevy Chase is gonna be here. And grateful community here in Northeast Minneapolis, we like to thank and welcome Janie and Chevy Chase. So we feel that this is a perfect fit for Edison High School because we are nestled in, in the middle of this art green community. The school is truly the heart of the community, right? And when your kids learn things and they come home and they tell you about it, it means something. And when the neighbors come and hear about things, it means something. And we are truly training the next generation to go forward. We're talking about a, a major overhauling of uh, not just schools, but our communities. This is a community. And when a community rises together, that means everybody, everything gets better. So their money helps fund a green coordinator, and that green coordinator then networks with our community and our students. What I work on is just thinking up initiatives and thinking about what the school wants and, and the teachers want and the students want and the community wants. And then I try to make whatever the community wants and the students want and the teachers want happen. The community has told me that they want this to be the hub in the center of Northeast Minneapolis. It has really revitalized this space, this intersection, this hub in the Holland neighborhood. But having a, um, a, a, a common space, an open space, green space, art, brings people together. We are at Edison High School on the intersection of 22 and Quincy. This is the corner, this is where it happens. Singh and I decided to tape down a gigantic E. It's the logo for Thomas Edison High School. And I put paws on all of the streets because I want everyone to leave their print at Edison. There's a lot of things that we've been doing to build the relationships uh, with the community through art, through our green initiative. We do all of our initiatives with sustainability and, sustainability and innovation in mind. We have to know that uh, the Northeast is the uh, art capital of Minneapolis. Local artists have been coming into the school and sharing their work with us. James Burner is a, uh, an example of So I think the backstop was a really good start, and it's sort of a source of inspiration for the school. Um, a lot of people feel like, you know, when that started rolling and happening, that like we were seeing change instead of just talking about it. And just the whole design of it and the innovation and everything in the top, it really speaks about what we're trying to build at Edison. The park board likes to see fields and things upgraded, and so with this ball field, we're trying to make it the home field for the Edison softball team. We have been practicing and playing at Northeast Park, and we are um, delighted to have our new field directly across from Edison. We're coming to the point now 
of just touching up the galvanized uh, spray paint on the uh, on the the benches. Bleachers for the fans to sit in is huge. You don't see that at really a lot of softball fields, especially not in the city. Yeah, right here we have uh, 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 Minneapolis Park. We have the school board has Edison School and its playing fields, and then the city has the basin. We've been doing what we're calling a uh, green blueprint. And the idea is to figure out a way that the three units of government can work together better to manage the turf in all three spots. Uh, the Holland neighborhood has been um, a major player. It was their vision to do a backstop to begin with, and they have really um, led the, the whole idea that this is a gateway and also a square, a park square in, in their community, and um, have really encouraged Jim, Jim to come up with a design that supports that vision. We had made this more or less a commemorative to not only Edison High School, but the uh, Minneapolis firefighters who developed the game of softball. The Firefighters Museum and the firefighters themselves are being honored through the backstop. Well, the art piece is to help bring back the history of what how softball got started, which was by firefighters. The National Association of Softball recognizes Lieutenant Rober, uh, who, was, who served uh, the fire department many years ago as one of the co-creators of modern softball. At the time, it was called kitten ball. This fire hall museum uh, was moving into the Northeast neighborhood again uh, with help of the NRP program to take this uh, unutilized commercial space and really make it a, a, a usable space and a beautiful, a welcoming space from the outside. Here, they are the historical experts. They know every little thing that there is to know about the history of the Minneapolis uh, uh, Fire Department. Um, Lewis Rober, right here, he's 30 years old, born in the United States, lived at 317 Madison Street, Northeast. He was assigned as a second pipeman on Chemical One. Well, this is champion, champion Fireman's Baseball Team, State of Minnesota. And the ballpark was at First Avenue North and uh, something street back of uh, the West Hotel. Station 19 started softball as kitten ball first, just to keep his crews busy during the downtimes. Here's a picture of him sewing softballs for kitten balls. Then they're going to dedicate a field over here at Jackson Square because Minneapolis Fire Department started Softball United States. And it's a perfect home, we felt, to commemorate uh, Lieutenant Rober's contribution and the fireman's contribution. The idea of developing a game for, shall we say, restless uh, firemen who, you know, at, at certain times did not have a lot to do waiting for the next fire. So keeping themselves active and, uh, and, uh, and finding something to, to spend their free time on seems like also kind of a, a nice way of bringing things together. These were the, I guess, the right fire hydrants for that time when uh, Roper was in his fire department number 19. Now the last part then will be the negative space that's in that plinth there, the, the limestone, um, will be a bronze plaque honoring uh, Lewis Rober. We're here to just check out the plaque that they've cast for um, the innovation field. Let me bring you downstairs and bring you towards the actual. This one is not done yet, but it will be, it will be, yeah, it will be clean. My job on this is not unlike um, a project manager for a bridge project or a park renovation or anything else. My job is to manage the nuts and bolts and the contracts and to try to keep people on schedule and on time and on budget. What do you think of it, sir? So we're hoping in about two weeks we'll be able to take this bronze plaque then and, and put it in place. When you're doing these meetings and there's this vision, all, you, all it is is just a, a picture on an easel. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it all looks great, and, um, but it's like, okay, how is this going to happen? How is this going to get done? So the Holland neighborhood has contributed um, over $350,000 to the project. They have been the, the main contributor, especially to the second and third phases. You find a depth of community when you can engage the different communities within community and make that very explicit through very uh, shared, through shared projects. Um, and I think you also get a greater depth of community when you can layer the history 
that's embedded within every community. There's many stories, and some of them could be forgotten, but when they're shared with, say, the, the youth that will be using this park, you've created a layering effect and a richness, I think, that older built-up communities have as a natural strength, but it's only a natural strength if it's drawn out. And projects and partnerships like this and the NRP program that recognizes the value of that activity really make that explicit. A lot of, of uh, different peoples and different skills that have been brought into the mix on this project. The goal of our work in public art in the city is to try to integrate art into functional things and things the city is building. The bridge ties in with the benches, which ties in with the sculpture, which ties in with the backstop, all of it creating a unified whole as these three city blocks come together. Without NRP, it would be hard to visualize how this could have come about. It was the notion that NRP had instilled over the years with not only this community group but other community groups that really try to make your investments build not only the physical infrastructure but the social infrastructure of your community. And, and because of that philosophy uh, was there, I think we not only were able to really do it well and spend the monies well, but we were able to leverage so many more uh, resources, not only in the form of additional uh, material or, or pro bono work, but also in the sense of the insight that imbued that work. I think it's probably the coolest backstop in the state of Minnesota. It's almost like metamorphosis. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it's, it's really been neat to, uh, to work here and have people from the neighborhood, especially later in the day when the, uh, there's uh, people walking their dogs and they just stop by and they want to, you know, just say how nice it is. To take a world-renowned sculptor, so artist, hold on, sweetie, artist and um, bring him into a ball field, into a part of Northeast that has, in the last 10, 15 years, been kind of the crappy part of Northeast and do something really cool, tie it into the school, a school that's been coming a long way in the last couple of years, just shows that there's, there actually is a commitment on behalf of the neighborhood people, on behalf of staff, on behalf of our city council member, that we're not being left in the lurch. I'm lucky to be able to do what I do and then have people come by and, and say that they appreciate it. I mean, it just I feel really grateful to be a sculptor when I'm working in places like this. I hope that people understand that they are the modus for bringing about positive change in their communities. They, it begins with them. This project and other similar projects, but especially this project, is a people-powered project. The American public square, I think, has been sort of reinvented anew and, and now is being used and celebrated.